What's going on? What's going on? Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Steve the Kidney Nurse. Man, what's going on, everyone? I'm on here for about 15 to 30 minutes. We're going to talk about the hemodialysis machine. How does it work? Have you ever wondered if you're a warrior and you go to outpatient hemodialysis, you know, you go in there, you see this machine, blood running and everything, lines all over the place. I remember the first time I walked into a dialysis center in 1985. I was 20, about 20, 21 years old. Now, can you imagine 1985, a young 21-year-old black guy walking into a hemodialysis center for a job? And I'm looking, man, all these machines going in blood. And you would have thought that I would have been, like, frightened, like, whoo! No, it would make kid you not. It amazed me. Um, looking at this, it fascinated me. And once I started learning and getting into the subject matter, it took off like wildflower. I kid you not. But what I want to tell you, dialysis machines have come a long way. They evolved so much. And with that, not all dialysis machines are created equally. However, they all work the same way. So whether you have a Fresenius, a Braun, a Phoenix, uh, this machine, that machine, they may just like a Ford is different than the uh, uh, Chevrolet or a, a Mercedes or, or Benzo. Same with the dialysis machines. Now, what I'm going to be talking about this evening is the dialysis machine. Now, some of you may have um, a console that looks like this. Okay. The standard um, screen for Fresenius, the H model, um, K models may look like that, but that's for the H model. And so your, your, your screen may look like that, but that's what we're not going to talk about specifically tonight. We're going to talk about this. Now, let me uh, move that. Okay. So you're watching, you're looking at what I'm going to read off so I can help you understand. And what I've done is I numbered. If you can see the numbers, uh, I, I try to make it as large as possible. But what I've done is numbered and, and drew a line to where uh, I'm talking about. So I'm going to look on uh, my screen on. I do, I'm doing a watch party. And I'm, yeah, I, I, can, I can identify it. So, okay, here we go. So like I said, you walk in any unit, you may be a patient, may not, you may be a family member, and you see this machine, and you're like, damn, this thing looks really technical. Don't let that intimidate you. This machine is very simple. Once you get the principles down and understand it, you can apply this to the bra machine, which is uh, the machine that I had on the advertisement. That's the Braun Dialog, okay? But let's start from number one. So we know, so let me just tell you how important this machine is, okay? One of the jobs of your kidneys is to filter waste out the blood. That's one of the jobs. The kidney has many jobs, but we're talking about filtering the waste out of your blood. When your kidneys stop working, the machine, which you're, which you're looking at on the screen, uh, is your lifesaver. I mean, that's the bottom line. If you're not doing PD and you're doing hemo, even with PD or home hemo, that's your lifesaver. So we're talking about in center, this type of machine that can look like a Fresenius. 
Um, now let's look at how this works. So you, because I've seen in a lot of groups, uh, people talked about their machines. I posted uh, pictures of the screen and everything like that. Some warriors, you know, veterans know what's going on and some don't. And that's okay because you got people who start dialysis every day. And the last thing they want to know is about the machine. They're just trying to get well. All right. Share this broadcast, y'all. It's 700,000 people being diagnosed each year. We got to help our warrior brothers and their family understand the machine. So, you know, the more you know, the better you'll be. And instead of uh, this kidney disease or dialysis being in front of you, you could be in front of dialysis know what's going on when you go into that clinic with your machine if it stops or whatever happens you don't have to look at the machine and be bewildered like what the hell is going on why is it beeping why no one's coming over here to reset it well today we're going to uh unravel the mystery woo, of the dialysis machine just like the uh mass uh magician giving up uh uh secrets I'm giving up secrets in the dialysis world. All right, here we go. Let's start with number one at the top left, the pump. So that's the blood pump. And usually it's centered right in the middle. And it's a spinning wheel. You'll see it rotating around. Uh, so the pump keeps the blood flowing from the body to the dialyzer and back. So when that pump stops, right, if the machine is alarming, anytime the machine alarms, the pump is going to stop, okay? That's what it's designed to do. So if that red light comes on and, and it's beeping, you better know that your blood has stopped moving. And when your blood has stopped moving, you're at high risk. You're at high risk of clotting your system because your blood is not moving and especially if you're not getting any heparin or blood thinner okay so number one is the blood pump and each patient has a different blood flow rate if i was on dallas is my blood flow for say uh casey may be 500 and louise may be 350 so everybody, if you see your number on your blood pump different than uh, your comrade that's sitting next to you, just know the doctor sets each person differently. Or they may have the same blood flow rate, okay? Now, again, if that pump stops, you're at high risk for clotting. That's the blood pump. All right, let's move over to the right, number two. Um. You see that screen right there, that that black screen that is pointing to. Well, that's this right here. And let's talk about this. So your tech or your nurse, uh, they program your treatment right into here. So if you see at the top where it says UF Gold, that's two thousand milliliters or two liters okay or if you want to go by pounds multiply times 2.2 but th the point is the amount of fluid that they're going to remove that's the 2000 and when you when you see it says uf time right now that person has 10 minutes left but that's where you program the treatment time whether the person is four hours four and a half hours, three hours, three hours and 45 minutes, three hours and 30 minutes. That's where the UF time goes. And when you when you turn the machine on and, and the machine starts to run, the UF time, and when you see all the way down to the right where it says RTD 11, technically those two numbers, the 10 and 11 is supposed to match up. All right. So when you move down that screen, you got uh the uf gold which they're removing 2000 uh milliliters of fluid right so when i say two milliliters uh let me do something right quick 
I'm talking about one liter saline bag. I'm talking about two of these, okay? That's two liters, okay? So, uh, and so you come down to UF time. That's where I program the time, man. If you run three hours, I put in three hours there. And so what happens, once you do that, where it says UF rate, the machine automatically calculating and how much fluid you take off the machine automatically counts the uf rate and what the uf rate is that 470 what that means is 470 milliliters of fluid is being removed per hour of uh 2000 milliliters and then when you come down where it says UF remove, where it says 1928, that's how much fluid has been removed so far. Move the rest of the fluid to equal up to, to the goal of 2000. And if you look to the left uh, uh, of that, you see 450, you see blood pump speed, that's where we put in the 450 that tells you it's like a little clock like how, when your treatment running it counts down if you can see it's almost finished well let me go back to the right for a minute you see where it says 600 at the top um well if you go up uh, above that um your blood pressure is red and and let me tell you one other thing so warriors who um may uh think about this in there at the treat i mean at the dialysis center you see at the top far right of this well with that 1424 is that's the time that's the time on the machine you know each like how you know how a cell phone has a a uh a clock Well, this machine has a clock, and that clock, that machine is going by that clock. So I bring this up because some warriors, when they go on dialysis, they look at the clock may be different, may be a different time, maybe off by three, four, five minutes. It may be different from this uh, clock in the machine where it says 1424. And so a person say, oh, I, I suppose they calculate your time. And then also, if the machine stops, the uh, RTD uh, stops. And, and, uh, and I'm sorry, the uh, UF time stops in the RDT. keeps rtd but each time your machine stops and they reset it the longer it stops the longer it, it prolongs your treatment the longer your machines uh stops or the conductivity drops it prolongs your treatment because the machine recalibrates so it could take off that fluid in an amount of time that it's supposed to take off so if you go and so and when you come down where you see the 600 that's the dialysate flow. That's how fast the dialysate, which is the bath, is coming through. Temperature is the temperature of the machine. Some patients say the tech and the nurse lower the temperature. Sometimes we do that if the patient's um, blood pressure is low because when we lower the temperature, it makes the patient shiver and increase the uh, blood pressure. Uh, and when it come down below the temperature, the conductivity, that measures the solution in the data. Uh, yeah, the conductivity is the solution, the electrolytes that's in the bath. And it has to be at a certain uh, level for it to uh, work with the dialysis. The right mixture has to be uh, properly mixed. Um,
And then when you come down where it says 11, that's how much time the person got. Um, the SVS, that's the profile of the person that is on the sodium profile. If you move over to the left where it says UF profile, uh, you can set how much fluid you want to remove uh, at different increments. Like if you want a step profile or a linear, it, you know, each profile pulls off a certain amount of fluid in the beginning or throughout the treatment. Now, when you see the TMP, that's the transmembrane pressure, and that's the pressure in the dialyzer between the uh, uh, the venous and the uh, UF rate. But the venous pressure over to the left, that, that's monitoring the pressure in the venous needle or the venous line. So it's that pressure is going to go up. And the arterial pressure monitors the uh, arterial needle. All right. And so each uh, pressure is supposed to be a, uh, between a certain range. And if you have a hot pressure uh, with your arterial site. All right. Um, so let me move on from that screen. So now, let me put this back up. All right. So we talked about treatment. So, uh, you know, everything is monitored from there. Uh, alarm will sound if there's something they should check on. Uh, alarm should sound. Now when you move down to number three, uh, to the right, that's the dialyzer. And the dialyzer acts like the artificial kidney. Now, I want to show you that. So this is the dialyzer right here. This is an artificial kidney. And actually, this is the Fresenius 160 non-reuse. And the reason why I say non-reuse because uh, our friends over in india they reuse these filters okay we used to do it but they did away with it single use only if you can see that so the single use only but the dialyzer, this acts as the artificial kidney, your kidney. And this is where the magic happens. And what I mean where the magic happens, I got a picture of that so it can help you understand. So if you look at that picture, right? Um, yeah, wait a minute. All right, I'm trying to get it so you can see that. All right, if you look at that, right, now you see where it says blood and, and dialysate. Now here at the top, right, this is where the used fluid, when people say, oh, where the, where's the fluid that goes that's connected to this, the dialysate holes. And the fluid goes out there into the drain. But if you look at this picture, you see where it says blood and dialysate. Well, one side, half is dark and half is light. In the middle of that, there's a something called a semi that separates the dialysate and the blood from mixing. If that happened, man, it would be some mess going on. But that membrane separates the blood and the fresh dialysate. Uh, well, my left, your, your right, or however you're looking at it. Where, where you see blood, um, you see waste, extra fluid, and red blood cells. Now, red blood cells don't cross that membrane because they're 
those cells are large, but the waste and the extra fluid crosses that membrane by a process called osmosis and diffusion. Okay. And so what happens that fresh that Alice say us diffusion, uh, it kind of balances it out and it brings that waste over to um uh, over to the clean side and it equalizes out, and then the extra fluid by negative pressure is being poured off the blood and it's going down the drain as well. Um, and so the dialyzer acts as an artificial kidney. Now, when you come down, oh, let me uh, go back to this. When you come down to number four, use dialysate, which is the waste. Go five. Now, you see the solution at the bottom where it says acid and bicarb? That's it. It, it, it sucks up those two solutions. You see those lines going in the machine and it's a mixing pump in the machine and it makes the dialysate. It mixes this stuff together. Um, uh, and then uh, it comes through where it says number five. The back uh, right there, the fresh dialysate, uh, it comes in. And then the used part goes out in number four, where it says number four goes out that hose, the waste and the extra fluid. All right. Now let's move down to number six. And you see where that arrow is pointing? That's pointing to a syringe called the heparin pump, right? Now each each or each patient, then maybe it cut back or We're giving heparin, and then all patients got anticoagulant, uh, heparin, uh, bolus. And so, what will happen once we put both needles in? Uh, we put heparin, say you get 2,000 units, we put 2,000 units in the venous line circulating your blood, and then we initiate treatment. Um, well, the heparin pump. The reason for it, because sometimes blood can clot when it's moving through the tubing. Uh, and like I said, medication called heparin can keep blood from at least the right amount of, uh, of heparin into the blood. And then number seven is the plastic jugs. On some machines, they uh, when you have this, this is called single station. Uh, Uh, where you get on it, they got what's called central delivery system, where they make this solution somewhere else, and it comes up through hoses and uh, and through the back of the machine. They take these same uh, lines that's going in the uh, acid in the bottle uh, to the wall stations. Now, uh oh, my time is running. Uh, let me see, I got to do this in four minutes. I may go over about 10 minutes, but look. Treatment. It monitors circulating your blood through the dialyzer, keeping track of blood flow and blood pressure. measure body and mixing fresh dialysate used to clean your blood uh because some patients actually think uh the the uh blood goes into the machine or some of their relatives and come out but uh the blood never actually goes into the machine uh and as i read some of the roles of the machine is circular your blood and blood pressure, measuring how much extra fluid is removed during dialysis, and mixing fresh dialysate to clean your blood. Now, let me talk about this one more time to break it down. So the dialyzer 
uh, filters waste from your blood. Now, check this out, guys. Only about two cups, that's it, two cups of blood leave your body uh, at any given time. That's only about nine. 9% of your blood. There are two sections. Now, here we go. This is where the magic happens. There are two sections inside the dialyzer. One section contains blood and the other contains the cleaning solution or dialysate. These two sections are separated by a filter called a membrane. This membrane, water and waste can fit through, but blood cells cannot. The dialysate pulls, okay? It pulls waste. Again, dialysate pulls waste because of the dextrose and the other stuff. Remember I told you osmosis and diffusion. The dialysate. Okay, uh, the dialysate with the waste is flushed down the drain and the clean blood, extra fluid in the blood is removed in a similar way. Okay, now as we take it on home, The dialysis machine keep you safe. Now, this is where uh, the venous trap, uh, where it monitors air, if air get into your line. If air gets into the blood tube, it could be harmful to you. Luckily, the dialysis machine has two air traps. One is before the dialyzer and one is after. If an air bubble somehow gets through the traps, an air sensor will shut down the pump and alarm will sound. Blood flow is stopped. I repeat, blood flow is stopped until the air is removed. And I see people um, text who got air in people's lines and the lines end up clotting because there was so much air, they tried to get it out and they couldn't, and it clotted the system. Now, let me show you how a real one looks like. This is the uh, this is the, the Venus trap, right, on the Venus line. And as you can see, right, this is where the blood comes down into the Venus chamber. Now, you can see this filter right here. This is what this is that they talking about. This is supposed to get you know air out, but if it's a lot of air and it gets through this point right here and it goes down, that's when the machine goes off. And then let me tell you, you see this line, this black line. That's where your blood should be filled up at, right there, because if you see this too. You see, the blood pours down. It pours down. And if the blood level is all the way up to the top, up to there, what happens, it still flows down, but blood starts to pool at the top, right? It pools at the top, putting you at risk of forming a big thrombi or clot at the top of this. And then that's when pressure start going up to TMP, the venous pressure. They start going up and then they got to end up changing the uh, machine. I posted pictures and showed you the clots that were in uh, the venous trap. So that's why you want to make sure you tell those staff to uh, put the uh, level where that black line is. It's a, it's a small line there. You can see it. Well, you can't because of the tube is clear. But right there. It's an indent. And so the you see where inside that tube, the how the blood can flow down? Right there, it pours down. 
right there. You see that opening inside? The blood has to freely flow down. If it doesn't freely flow down, like I said, it could pull at the top, thus putting you at risk to clot. Well, it forms a clot, okay? It can form a clot right up there because the blood is not pooling, it's not flowing down freely. So this is the venous line, right? You want to make sure these things are like when you're on the machine that this line is open so it can monitor your venous, uh, your venous pressure. And this is the side on which this is where a lot of the nurses put the medicine in. When you taste that medicine, when they give you the vitamin D or the iron, they put it in this line right here. All right, I got another one more thing before I go. Um, again, this is a 16 gauge needle. This is one and one quarter. You see the length of that? The reason why it looks um like this part right here looks clear because it's green and it's the green screen effect. But if you see how long that needle is, that's one and one quarter inch. And the purpose for that is when uh, we have a patient that their arm or kind of for patients with uh, a lot of weight in their arms or legs and the access is deep we use this one and one quarter needle. And look at that, look at that tip. It's sharp, guys. So this is what warriors go through three times a week, uh, you know, until they get that transplant. So with that being said, let me look at my comments and I'm gonna call it a night. Thank you guys for coming on. Oh, hey, Miss Coretta Gross. Yes, thank you for watching. And, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Steve the Kidney Nurse, on Facebook. Also, Urban Health Outreach Media. I'm affiliated with uh, them and the Warriors Quest Show. Uh, definitely. Uh, I'm going to be on here possibly each night with tidbits, information uh, that can help kidney warriors that's going through this, arm them with some great information that you can use. And as always, um, I do have to read this, the disclaimer. Uh, let me move this banner. Uh, education disclaimer. Uh, as I always put up there, the information broadcast on here uh, is provided for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended or implied to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. And so with that being said, guys, you know, everything I talked about uh, uh, with the machine, the numbers, like right here, wait a minute, I'm sorry. Right here, every, I mean, if you don't, you know, if you want to ask your doctor, uh, your physician about it, yeah, pull up on them and ask them, you know, take a screenshot of this if you want. Um, and then ask them, you know, what does this stuff mean? Uh, yeah, if, if you know, if you kind of doubt me, this your first time watching, um, take a screenshot and then when you go to dialysis, uh, ask the staff or your nephrologist to explain this to you and see if they say the same thing I pretty much said, you know, they may go around the corner or they may not have time to do it, <laughs> especially if the tech got three, four patients then you know, or unless they real cool with you. They, you know, they may, uh, you know, you may have your favorite tech or something like that. Uh, and you can ask them and they may break it down to you. But for most of them, you pull this out on your screen and ask them about it. 
they're going to kind of give you some run around mumbo jumbo. Uh, and they may break it down, but they're going to think like who you think you are uh, pulling out like you know this. I, you know what I'm saying? That's how they're going to carry it. Um, again, I explained everything on that screen. The goal, uh, the clock time. Uh, over to the right, all the way at the top. Um, and the Dallas say flow, how much fluids uh, taken off, uh, the UF rate, the conductivity, uh, the RTD, how much is removed, the UF rate, UF time, the time running, TMP, venous pressure. And then these ones at the bottom, we would have to go into each screen. But those blue buttons at the bottom. But the main thing that you need to know as a warrior, if you got this type of machine uh, screen, is how much you're pulling off. The UF time. It makes, if you run three hours and 30 minutes, make sure they program three hours and 30 minutes. Some text, and I'm not, and I'm, I'm going to just be honest with you. Some people, like if you come in at the end of the day and they're ready to go, they may put in, you may say you run three hours and 30 minutes. They may put in three hours and 20 minutes, three hours and 25 minutes or three hours and 15 minutes. And you go off to sleep. And when the time goes off, you think you, you, you ran your whole time, but you ran three hours and 20 minutes. You didn't run your complete time. So it's good to know this machine uh, the UF rate, how much fluid with that 470 is, how much fluid you taking off every hour. So if you need like you start cramping, you can look at this machine and see how much fluid you pour it off. And now in that way, now you know how much you can take off because you see, um, you know, how much is taken off. So. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to get ready to close it down. I've been on longer than I, I, I wanted to, but I hope you guys got something from this education session from Steve, the kidney nurse. Uh, if you do, give me a thumbs up and, and, and share this for your boy. All right. Um, hey, Coretta, what's up? Uh, yeah, I want to talk about that. I want to do a show. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel and my page, Steve the Kidney Nurse, and I'll make sure I do a uh, a PD session. I got PD information, absolutely. I got all I got thousands of, uh, of 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 content, thousands of pages of content. I kid you not, and I don't say that lightly. I've been doing this thirty three years, so I accumulated a lot of information, especially from Davida. All right. I got a lot of information that they didn't want to uh, put out there to educate. So I had to take it upon myself uh, to get that information and put it out to the people. So and that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, thank you, Stephanie Smith, for watching. Uh, please subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel, Steve, the kidney nurse, and make sure you uh, share it with some people. And make sure they share it with some people that may know somebody that know somebody that know somebody that got this disease because that's how it is. You even know somebody that know somebody that know somebody that know somebody that has kidney disease, and we're going to try to stop that. All right, especially Steve, the kidney nurse, not going to have it. So thank you, Coretta Grace uh, Gross, for uh, watching, Stephanie Smith. Please share this information, guys, to other warriors. If you're in any other groups and they don't know about this, share this with them so they can be uh, privileged to have access to the information. All right. Love you guys, man. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Um, have a great night. And I definitely see you guys on the other side of the education movement. All right. Stay blessed and encouraged. Peace.